Hi guys, today I will review about 2016 Ford Transit and I would say it's first generation of first transit on US market which they built from 2015 and until now but in 2020 they did some changes and we would like to talk with you a little bit about this period from 2015 until 2020. The Ford Transit got first place on the US market by selling the vans. It's included even mini vans or other heavy vans, full-size vans. It's the most selling van on the US market. Mostly we will talk with you about uh, two versions. One of them with 3.7 liter engine as this one, another one with 3.5 liter uh, EcoBoost engine. And no matter what kind of engine would you choose, problem I would say with particularly this vehicle would be almost the same. The base version with a 3.7 liter engine has a 275 horsepower and the maximum torque is 353 pounds of torque at 400 rpm. But EcoBoost, which is smaller engine volume with just 3.5 liter engine has much better uh, torque, which is 400 and it's much lower number around 2250 rpm. You have many options additional to engine what kind of transit you can choose. You can choose with three different wheelbase from short one, middle one and long one. The same with the roof size, like low roof like this one, middle roof and high roof. But they built this van with super strong steel and they even increase payload on this car for 600 pounds compared to previous Ford Recon Alliance. And from my own even experience uh, to tell you how strong this metal on this uh, transit, if you lose your uh, plate number and you want to put them back to drill this uh, from bumper, sometimes I waste a lot of uh, drill bits. It's really, really strong metal. Our service asked to replace oil on this van each three and a half thousand miles. And uh, sometimes we can see this van after 5,000 miles or even more. But this van use just regular semi-synthetic oil, nothing really special and uh, you can easily drive this van until 200,000 miles uh, i would say without any problem to have small size of the tires on the van it's not a good idea because they're not gonna last for a long period but as a mechanic i can tell you it's a real gift for us because right now uh, one wheels hold it just by five balls no more eight balls like on for the canal line and weight of this uh, rims with tires much much uh, smaller it's make our life much easier Inside the Ford Transit, you feel yourself like in a regular car. You can even adjust a steering column in four ways and up and down, like inside and out, which is never was before in advance. It's really comfortable. Ford Transit very easy to maneuver when because this one equipped with the parking sensor and the backup camera inside the rear view mirror. Transit has very convenient way how you can replace the, all your seat bench. Usually you have over here some handles on each of these legs supposed to be three but as i understand regular customer already broke them and all what you can do is just pull them up and fold it or remove it we have the same van as a rental car during our 2017 burning man we replaced half of the seats like have nice uh, sleep spot and spot for our, all our sp stuff we really love it this van during our trip if you have business to drive the people you definitely will have problem with the seat belts yeah people definitely will break them and you have to replace them it's take pretty much time i would say for each belt around two hours again like around 200 dollars and parts it's not really cheap but they're much more reliable compared to e250 van for example as you can see it's a lot of them conversion and conversion parts for e250 vans is horrible this one is with this kind of situation much easier and another good thing about transit because you can re remove any of the seats in a couple minutes this is a huge plus for Ford Transit. All of us are now in quarantine and sitting at home and uh, what's the main word which you're gonna hear from any TV live show that's wash your hands and you know guys I love this country I am passionate about this country and about medicine but only one thing which really surprised anybody who came uh, to United States from uh, Soviet Union guys what are you doing when we saw all these doctors uh, nurses on a street when they waiting public transportation already in his work uniform it looks crazy yes you wash your hands but you bring like tons of microbes and viruses on your clothes from public transportation to work guys you're seriously crazy and right now the story about the same kind of craziness about this weekend for example 
a lot of Americans uh, do not care how clean they cars. Really don't care, guys. Really, your cars looks like sometimes like too dirty. Not all of them, but I understand the cars in the United States is cheap. It's not like like big deal like in Ukraine in the Soviet Union the price for the car, and you don't care of them. And you put a lot of trash inside the car, and especially as trash from your Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, all these plastic bags, plastic cups, and uh, other stuff. And for example, what's happened with this vehicle with Ford Transit? One of your passengers which next to you complains that his butt is overheated. Or his melted and you have like like kind of like fried eggs inside your car. You know what's the reason? Because you need to clean your cars more often. Because all these plastic bags, all these cups get under this seat where installed heater fan. And this fan works like vacuum cleaner. You get air from your interior and put them uh, from all like vents uh, on the back of the car. And when it's stuck with all these plastic bags with your cups, it gets overheated. Guys, if you want to fix your problem with your heater or because your butt is overheated on this fan, because fan overheated on this, this is, please clean your cars more often and then we're going to fight coronavirus. If you are between a decision which kind of fan you're going to buy it for your business with a sliding door or with regular door as this one, I would say this kind of door is like, which is regular one, much more reliable because all these sliding doors has a lot of problem with the rollers and I would say each 30,000, maybe 40,000 miles, sometimes you need to replace some of these rollers, sometimes even like more. Additionally to all rollers problems, which each rollers parts could cost you around 100, 110 dollars, you have also a problem on the sliding door with the interior door, door handle and the this labor is pretty easy. It would take around 30 minutes to replace this door handle, maybe even faster. But price for door handle itself, it's 40 bucks. Also, another way where you're gonna spend some money if, for example, your van parked somewhere in pure air when sometimes people throw for some reason stone in the, inside the glasses, this van could cost you a lot of money because, as you can see, no more easy to replace windows as on Ford kind of line as they all glue it on. And this means that you, you cannot do this by yourself for 10, 15 minutes. It depends how, which window on E250. On transit, you're supposed to glue it. And then this means that you're supposed to call to glass company. They will charge you for $300, $400 for each of these broken windows. Transit has any, a lot of new force and Lincoln has a lot of problem with the windshield windows. If you're going to use heat during winter times and put them on maximum position if for example your window is frozen i would say i guarantee you that you're gonna crack your windshield from my experience why new force especially transit has a lot of problem with the windshield the reason is because they start to put much thinner windshield that's my opinion and during uh, temperature difference like especially during winter time or even if some small stone get inside this like huge windows you always get cracked and this company spent a lot of money on the uh, windshield replacement and even when I work in my previous company when I work in like huge car auctions the company who do like glasses has like a lot of money and a lot of job during the replacement windows on the Fords. Let's imagine that you just bought this car doesn't matter if it's new or old one used one I would say I would recommend for you to grease or lube three spots. First spot it's a balls on the left side of the engine for uh, ignition coils Second spot, lube your spare tire lift. And third spot, that lube bolts which hold your suspension or subframe on the front. First spot, which you need to lube, especially if you just bought this car and plan to have it for more than 100,000 miles, it's lube your ignition coils bolts. As you can see, on this one, you don't have them. Why? Because as we replaced Spark Plus just recently, the car has right now a little bit more than 103 thousand miles and at this mileage we replace spark plus because usually you need on this van replace it during 97 uh, thousand miles and problem is because this balls it looks like this and inside of the coils it's all covered by water and then it's stuck the reason to lube this balls is that you need to replace spark plugs on the vehicle usually you're supposed to do this as on this car each 100 thousand miles and if you want to keep this car for this mileage, you definitely need to do this. But if you're not going to loop these balls, these balls will stuck in valve cover gasket because these balls screw in the nuts, which are uh, like welded in inside the plastic uh, valve, cover, uh, valve cover. And uh, as soon as you want to 
unscrew them, you're gonna broke these nuts. And <laughs> only one way is gonna be or replace the valve cover or like do something like we do with a like big piece of metal, which are gonna hold it uh, all uh, three coils together. There's no other way to fix this problem. Spark plugs on this van is double plugging, which is means that they completely fine until 100,000 miles. But if you wanna drive this car more than 100,000 miles, you're supposed to replace it. But in general, for example, if compare quality of this uh, spark plugs, uh, which is built by Motorcraft, compare, for example, to Champion Iridium, which is supposed to be a more fancy one, uh, Champion Iridium spark plugs could be even worse compared to this double plugging. But guys, I would not recommend it to drive this van with more than 100,000 miles without spark plugs replacement. You don't need problem with misfiring during your some long trip. Throttle body on this van also has some problem during the first years of production, which is 2015 when they appear on the market and you're supposed to replace it because sometimes this car lose power on intersection, completely shut off the engine and you have to replace it. I don't see any more this problem. I still have this parts in stock, but uh, I think I'm supposed to return it to a dealer. Another problem which you have to worry about on Ford Transit is this water resistor. Uh, at the beginning on this car, they have problems that water which collects here after like rain goes all the way down under the hood. And biggest problem which happened with this uh, transit, you see it's, I would say, almost here. These pieces fall off and then all water goes inside the air, air filter. And what we find down, sometimes this water air filter, sorry, I call them water filter, but sometimes it works like really like water filter. When you open it, it's full of water. And then engine, what could happen, engine could suck all this water from air filter and put inside of the engine. And in base case scenario, you can have misfire, but or sometimes even more heavier and like more expensive problems. And that's why be worried about these pieces. Like always look, they're supposed to look like this or here it's not right. And we're gonna put this like this way, but just, Look how far they did it, yeah. That's it. On the bumps, you always lose them. And I would say, whatever you do, if you're not gonna put some glue or anything over here, you're gonna have water inside your air filter or some, maybe some problem with the electrical harness. We just did our review and what we find out under the hood of one of the, this four transit. One of this water drain was lost and you see what's happened with air filter. It's completely uh, damaged and destroyed. And all this water gets in your engine. Ford Transit has a lot of way how you can overheat them during the summer times. One of this uh, problem is uh, fans. It's a new one. I believe we're gonna replace a lot of them soon. And what's happened, sometimes one of these fans is uh, burned out and the engine, of course, get overheated. How you can predict this, uh, that uh, you need to do something. I would say if you want to be fine during long trip or especially if you work somewhere in a warm area, I would recommend to check your fuses during the warm period on in the warm area at least one per week. And this uh, fuses I will show you right now. There's three fuses related to a uh, coolant fan. One of them here, which is 40 amp green one. It's related to coolant fan and one of them here. It's hard to show on a camera the difference between fuses. But for example, if you're going to see this one, this fuse looks pretty clean. You see just metal pieces looks um, nice and clean. But on this fuse, which is related to fan, you see something like a bubble on the middle of this fuse. And this is a sign that this car would have very soon problem with the cooling fan. But rarely what could happen with you. For example, the same as happened with me. I replaced coolant fan. I replaced all these three fuses under the hood, but fans and steel is not working. And what does it mean? That means that your main uh, fuse rail, which is under the driver's seat, is also burned out. You need to unscrew these bolts, to this cover out, or here are gonna be your battery, which is a different story. And here you will see like plastic box. Inside of this plastic box you will find that fuses. Then I found out that one of these fuses, which is inside of this box, was burned out. This 100 amp fuse. And then I supposed to call dealer and ask them if they have the fuse. Of course they have it, but uh, delivery time is two days. And what I have to do if customer wants this car right away. And guys, you can find it at least three fuses, which is gonna be on the left side from this fuse, which is empty. Yes, it's not a 100 amps, but it's 80 amps. And if you have a new system with new fans, new fuses under the engine, it's good enough for at least first period. And I just switched the position of this fuse from 100 
amps to 80 amps. It was good enough for first couple days. Then when the new fuses arrive, I just replace it. But the customer was happy at least because he can drive this car for a couple days and make money. Guys, that's the area where your battery. If you need to jump it, you need to open this cover. It's gonna be your minus terminal. Sometimes they put uh, this battery like this from left side to right side. Sometimes they put my, uh, negative terminal on the front and positive on the back. You can find out only when you remove this uh, cover. And that's why this battery on this car works for very, very well and a very long period because usually when you battery inside the interior, this means that you will save, save a lot of money in the future because when the battery under the hood, it usually works for three, f maximum five years. Inside the interior, sometimes it's like for 10 years, but replacing cost would be more expensive because mechanics supposed to move all the way front seats, like do all this works. And I would say that he will charge you for around like hour, hour and a half, which is 100, 150 dollars just for labor to replace this battery small piece but sh but if it's broken it could cost you a lot of uh, money most of the time people don't care about this small stuff as uh, this holder for your hood stick and if it's bro broke they don't care but what could happen is this one and what's happened a couple times in our experience the sticks which hold your hood get inside and then it's stuck inside the coolant fan cool fans get stuck your engine get overheated and sometimes you have to replace even engine because you don't want to replace this five bucks or 10 bucks part. My opinion in general is that engineers who build these vans think that this van is supposed to work only somewhere on Alaska or on Canada because a lot of ways when you, how you can get overheated this van. Another way is hoses. A lot of them just blow out like accidentally. One of them is upper hose. Another one, this hose, especially during the, uh, around these plastic connectors. and. Another very simple and small part is you see this plastic hose. I can show you, it's even like very hard to move. I would say it's like really feels like plastic, but in general, it's supposed to be so soft. No matter what kind of reason was to overheat your uh, Ford Transit, then it's going to be like snowball. It's get more and more money. For example, let's imagine you overheat this van with uh, coolant fans, this problem. And what's happened? Engine was overheated, which is mean like a lot of parts also was overheated. And then and first thing which could blow out very soon is this hose on the top of the fan. As I show you, it's over here. And I believe it's another problem. You see, it's like pretty strong already. It's not soft anymore. From the beginning, it's supposed to be soft like this. You see? But it's no more like this. And I believe this fan is going to be here soon. You saw already fuse. You saw already how looks this hose. It's going to be break very very soon and another reason this uh, parts cost just for this tube for 42 dollars and if you have old design so you're supposed to replace not only this hose you're supposed to replace a uh, uh, coolant reservoir because they don't make any more this coolant reservoir for old design as this one in this case you're supposed to replace also with uh, this hose together with coolant reservoir again additional at least 40 50 bucks okay that's one problem. Another problem. Your engine get overheated. Another plastic connector. You see these hoses over here. The next to the exhaust manifold. You see, for some reasons they put some like uh, temperature reducer material as this one, as a foil. And they start to leak next to all these plastic connectors. Another, just I, I just tell you price for parts. $115. Again, you're supposed to drain coolant. It's additional like 30, 40 bucks for coolant. It depends how much you lose. And also mechanic labor. For this labor, I would say also around one and a half, two, I think two hours. If we have to replace the uh, upper radiator holes, we usually do this with a coolant reservoir cup because sometimes you can see this hose like suck like this, like somebody did the vacuum inside this hose. And this sign that you're supposed to replace this uh, uh, coolant reservoir cup because you get something like vacuum inside the coolant system. If somebody has different opinion, please put this in the, your comments because again, it's pretty common and pretty funny story why this car has so many blow out hoses. Maybe if somebody has more information than me and tell us please uh, what's going on really, I would be very appreciated. Usually when when reach around 100,000 miles, you can get something like foggy oil area next to this uh, uh, variable time 
timing solenoids, but I would say they never leak, you don't have to worry about this, but if you want to replace them, in this case you're supposed to replace valve cover gasket and take out valve cover. Not often, but pretty rarely you can get some engine code with check engine light on, which is related to EVAP system and for uh, oxygen sensor. But most of the time, guys, from uh, our experience, that uh, it's EVAP purge valve, which is on top of the engine, it's over here. It looks like this. It's holded by two bolts. The price for parts is just $52 and also labor around 40 minutes. If you get engine code, most of the problem is this valve. If you hear some weird noise, like clunky noise during your door opening, or here is everything fine, this means that you need to replace door check. This part looks like this. Again, like it's around 50 bucks parts cost. This part could cost you also even more money if you're not going to replace it. Because if this door check inside of this door get broken, you could have like very big problem with your harness. Uh, harness could be like cut it by a broken piece inside of this uh, like door check and you're gonna lose all power on the whole door. One more proof that uh, Ford Transit has a uh, junk uh, harness. If you lose any power or for example, if your window doesn't go up or down, it's usually a problem with the harness or Ford Transit. And the price for harness is one, for 3418 that's what you're supposed to replace you can re try to repair it but guys it's not gonna work for a long time i would say just replace the harness yes it's gonna take you like around two hours to replace it and 135 dollars for parts if you get crack on your mirror glass on the side mirrors usually it's pretty cheap and pretty easy to replace it uh, i would say normal mechanic would not charge you more than 20 bucks for this but the price for glasses is, uh, I would say it's, it's costly. If you have like heated mirrors like this one, it could cost around $100, like maybe $85 for each glass. If it's not heated, around 66. As you can see, Ford Transit has like very fancy fuel door and you're not gonna be able to open until you open the door, which is bad for you. You're gonna lose your warm air inside the interior. But a lot of time you destroy them because people forget to close it and then you smash it. And in this case, you have to be prepared to spend something around uh, $200 for parts. And one of these parts is supposed to be even painted. It's not included labor, but labor would cost you around like 40 bucks. Because this bracket, which is usually always broken on the top, it costs you $85 just for parts. Fuel door, it's 36 bucks. Uh, each molding is around the same price, around 30 bucks. And, but this part, as you can see, is supposed to be painted. Owners who has uh, before uh, for the Canalane uh, probably know that the uh, fans for uh, a heater are usually not really reliable and you're supposed to replace like 30,000 miles, 40,000 miles. On transit, it's not a big deal. For 200 miles, which we already put on most of these fans, I would say we replaced only a couple of them. A couple of them for front heater, a couple of them for back heater, story you heard about, and a couple of them uh, for AC, which is on the back. Second thing which you need to loop in this car since you bought it, it's a balls which hold suspension. It's these two balls and two on each side of subframe. But guys, it's possible only if you just bought this car. If it's already were somewhere in some salty area or north area where a lot of snow, I would say don't even try, you're gonna break them. You see all these holes, these holes from which one you get salty snow and water and usually when you will be able to unscrew these balls you will see a lot of water start to like around like crazy like Niagara Falls on the floor and yeah it's a good that at least they have this so you can loop some a little bit on the front uh, with WV like defoil or some other fluid uh, to like eat the thrust but usually never happen and for example during the time when you replace transmission we find out it's another like cost for your uh, for transit if you want to do transmission, I would say be ready to pay for whole suspension. Why? Because again, you're not going to be able to unscrew this bolt. Yes, you can melt them. You're going to find out what to do. But then <laughs> all this piece would be like supposed to be replaced together because all this bolts is stuck. You're going to replace this control arms because you're going to destroy bushings during unscrewing. And sometimes you need to replace a subframe because <laughs> when you're going to unscrew the um, rack pinion, you also can break the same bolts. And 
no way without replacement this control arms and this subframes usually replace the transmission third place where you need to look at it this spot on a spare tire you need to lower it completely when you just bought this car and grease uh, this car this spare tire hold it by two wire you need to loop thread on one of this wire and you need also need to loop one like small cylinder piece on the uh, also on wire which holds this uh, uh, spare tire because in case if you're gonna need it you're not gonna be able to replace it because it's also covered by rust and no way to take out this uh, spare tire until you cut it with some heavy piece uh, heavy pliers another bad thing about transit where which cost you money this rubber coupling on the transmission guys I will guarantee that you have to replace this part this part rubber piece each 30,000 miles you see it's pretty new but you already see crack here usually these parts never work more than 40,000 miles and for example if you hear some bumpy noise from bottom of your car especially on the middle of your car just go to mechanic and ask him to check these parts they it finally they i think stopped to do these parts on 2017 transit they just attach a dry shaft to transmission without any rubber coupling which uh, make car drives more smoother i mean coupling but most of the time 30,000 miles that's it and they did this you most of the time dealers did this only one time replacement and never more if you're not gonna do this not gonna fix this car uh, parts what's gonna happen drive shaft just disconnect from transmission and then together with the rear tires they're gonna spin like crazy and broke this part this part this part is gonna cost you crazy amount of money they're gonna break transmission i saw this many times and this is the reason on the first model of transit they didn't put this metal protection right now they put in case if you forget to replace this parts and at least you're gonna reduce the amount of parts which you're supposed to replace during failing of uh, your drive shaft the ford company definitely has a lot of uh, great engineers just remember ford gt40 right but uh, probably engineers who built uh, brakes and tires for these cars was from fiesta department and uh, look on these uh, tires and uh, brakes they so small and this means that on this van you're gonna spend uh, a lot of money on tires and brakes each year why because no matter what kind of brand you're gonna choose for this uh, van for tires they're gonna wear out for 25,000 miles not more definitely i guarantee you they too small and they burn out like super duper quickly we used a lot of brands for this vans and i definitely not uh, recommend to you use continental I, uh, this is the same brand which they pulled uh, from manufacturer i definitely not recommend for you to use general which a uh, company like owned by continental because side vault is uh, like super strong to put them on the uh, rims uh, your mechanic will spend a lot of time please be kind with your mechanic don't buy continental or general tires the best one which we find out is the firestone of course mission is more better but uh, it's too much money and also what is surprised me nexon cheap korean brand works the same well as the uh, firestone the rear brake system on uh, ford transit is horrible and uh, right now i will show you on examples why another costly thing for you if you owner of ford transit that you're supposed to replace rear brake parts pretty often from brake parts is okay usually they works for at least 40,000 miles but probably Ford reduced a little bit quality of brake pads and right now front brake pads usually works for around 30,000 miles but between 30 and 40 but rear brake pads it's usually 15,000 miles no more and show, just would like to show you why for example it's a rear brake pads from previous generation uh, Ford Econoline you see the size it's a brake pads from Ford Transit could you imagine how this piece of piece you understand what kind of piece can hold so big when as a Ford Transit on a rotor and stop them it's twice smaller of course this explains why it's worn out so like so much faster another problem with uh, rear brakes on Ford Transit uh, brake calipers uh, don't even try I would say if you're not gonna sell this car tomorrow to order these parts from somebody else from, I mean from aftermarket parts I would recommend only dealer parts because they so bad that even dealer's parts uh, doesn't work well and what's happened with the brake calipers it's a brand new brake caliper from dealer you see like first of all it's very hard to maintain it's not very hard but stupid on most of the car as a ford transit with this kind of design you're supposed to press a piston inside how you usually do this you have like tools 
like this, in which in the same time scroll in by direction, usually on the right side, as a, by a clockwise, and the press in the same time. On transit, probably in this case, they ask a German engineer uh, how to do this. For left cylinder, uh, brake cylinder or brake caliper, they ask to turn the piston on one side, on, for uh, right side in different size. This means that you're not gonna able anymore use these uh, tools on both uh, calipers. You're supposed to buy or two separate tools or do this like we usually do. We usually this do put this over here and turn with regular brake caliper press. Also, a brake drop on this car, if you need to replace roster, also much more expensive. It's usually around three hours to replace both uh, brake rotors because brake rotors are uh, screwed to uh, your bearing hub. And this like looks like one piece and you're supposed to unscrew it each time for tell us always replace uh, bolts. And uh, you need to buy, buy like 10 bolts. You need to replace the uh, rubber O-rings for like your uh, shaft and this costs you like a lot of money. It's not just brake rotors and a regular car. All 10 bolts, uh, O-rings, brake pads and uh, brake rotors. Expensive. Last, we have a lot of the pr trouble with uh, our customer at the beginning with Ford Transit because they complain that just after replacement brake pads, they have like a lot of smoke from rear wheels and a couple of these vans was even stopped by policemen. They tell them that you have smoke from rear wheels, you cannot drive anymore, you're supposed to call to tow truck. And what's happened, how Ford officially explains this, that when your brake pads and the brake rotors a little bit worn out, they stuck inside of the brake rotors because it's like, if you look on the rotors, it looks like, I know, like U shape, and they explain this way. And also over here on the brake, you can find something like rubber damper. You see, over here it's installed. And they said that if you not in install these parts, if you not install this rubber bam uh, damper, the brake parts could stuck inside the rotor. For me, it sounds like stupid, and they stop even to put these parts on later model. Like all the story looks, I mean, sounds for me like it stupid and I believe they just have problem with the computer or with ABS module and they try to sneak out and don't do any recalls but a lot of this van has smoke from rear brake pads as soon as you replace the brake pads and what Ford tell you replace in this case brake rotors replace only original brake pads and put this damper on the rear caliper. Wheel hubs and bearings on the Ford Transit it's very reliable but sometimes you have to replace them without any reason. On some vehicles I saw them in 30, sometimes in 40,000 miles, sometimes, like most of the times, I never replace it even until 200,000 miles. But it's not a like, like big deal, but uh, you should be ready to spend around two and a half, like three hours to do this. And most of the time you need to replace this together with a brake rotor. Power steering pump, another weak area on Ford Transit. You see this new, new one, shiny. I saw in cars with the 30,000 miles when they just came in from coupling recall from dealer and then you like <laughs> steering wheel just stuck on like one position and you're not going to be able to turn. That's usually the sign that you need uh, to replace a power steering pump or if you have some like hardness, uh, hard, hard uh, you need to put a lot of power to turn your steering wheel. It also means that you need to replace steering pump on this car. It's not going like, to cost you crazy money for labor, maybe if I, I believe around one and a half, two hours, it's a pretty easy job, but parts, of course, like um, from dealers, you're never cheap. As you can see, this van has aftermarket step, and guys, my recommendation, if you have money, just put original from Ford manufacturer. It's easiest to install, the safest, the strongest one, all this manufacturer, you see that it's super rusty, they usually fall off very quickly, and uh, not so strong as manufacturing, and especially this manufacturer uh, step, which costs, I think, around $2,000, which can sneak out the car when you close the door. This is like the best choice, but it's the most expensive, $2,000 for step. You can buy some used car, right? Front brake calipers usually equals very reliable, but the design again, like it's probably European design, you see, usually you have bolts here, which screw, screw in brake holes or here, if you're gonna replace a brake caliper, you're usually supposed to replace the brake holes together because unscrew this nut, which holds this brake holes, usually unreal during some long period. Guys, the biggest problem with the transmission is not the transmission reliability. This means that 
biggest problem is that usually you're supposed to replace tons of suspension parts during replacement of your transmission because the area which like hold it all this sun frame supposed to be replaced i mean like all these bolts needs to be unscrewed to lower suspension to uh, be able to take transmission out and again it's usually unreal and this means that to unscrew this you're supposed to destroy your control arms you're supposed to destroy your bolts which hold your rack and pinion uh, your stabilizer bar, uh, bar and uh, it usually never happened and sometimes during the transmission replacement we had to replace all these swipe bars <laughs> and you know what's funny a couple times we called to uh, John character and ask guys do you have this subframe with the control arms on transit yeah okay when could, would be able to bring it to us tomorrow are you sure because we know how hard this is to replace and say yeah 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 and then two days after oh sure you know we cannot replace this could you hold a couple more days yeah yeah I know I can't hold don't worry <laughs> but guys it's like horrible job on this car in salty area as a summary guys yes we tell you a lot today about the bad thing of this uh, transit but guys I would say it's no other options you're gonna buy it this one because uh, gmc savannah or for uh, like chevrolet express is completely crap i don't know even who buy, bought this car before in this van uh, dodge ram maybe good one i heard a lot of about this van but sorry i don't have much experience with this van because mostly our customers choose this one and one thing which i could tell you about dodge ram really engine is good this 3.6 liter engine is fine on dodge ram but the uh, transmission because they put transmission from dodge caravan maybe not the best ones and also not a lot of space under the hood to fix it that's why you're gonna choose ford transit thank you so much for that you were with us during this re review and see you in our next reviews